Hi, this is Shad. Welcome back to another tutorial on Java JDBC. As you know, we're walking through a series on building a Swing GUI that connects to a Java database. Currently, we're at video 12.5, populating the GUI list grid JTable. So let's go ahead and get started. JTable is Swing's GUI list grid component. Basically, you pass a model of your data, and the JTable will handle rendering a view of that data. It's actually based on the model view controller design pattern. What we'll do is we'll create an employee table model that we can pass to the actual JTable. So the table model is a special class that you have to implement. So what we're going to do is extend the abstract table model class. And we have to override or provide an implementation for the following methods. We need to handle for get column name, get column count, get row count, get value at, and get column class. I'll show you some implementation code for this once we switch over to Eclipse. If you need to get the gory, gory details on the Java Swing uh, component, then I'd recommend you do a Google for an Oracle Java Swing tutorial. There's a lot of advanced features you can do with the table. We'll just cover the basics to get us started. All right, so what I'll do is I'll start with this employee table model. It extends abstract table model, and then I'll override the appropriate methods for it. So first off, a couple of things I'll do is I'll define the column names. So I'll have last name, first name, email, and salary. These are the column names that will actually appear in the Swing GUI. I'll also set up some constants that refer to these positions of the column names. We'll use these a little later when we need to get value at. I'll also have a reference for employees. And this is actually based on the constructor. When they, uh, when they create the model, they'll pass in the employees, and I'll assign it accordingly. So I'll overwrite this first method, get column count. So the swing J table will ask us how many columns we have. I simply give the length of the columns, column names array. They'll also want to know how many rows we have. So I'll use that employees list that I have and simply return the size. Next, we'll, they'll need to get a column name for a specific column. So I simply index and send my column names array and return that information for them. So then moving on down, uh, for get value at, this is probably the most important method. So they need to get the actual data value for a given row and column. So for this example, when they say row, um, I'll say employees.getRow, and it'll give me the temporary employee that they want. And now I simply need to find the appropriate data element. So if it's last name column, I'll return the employee's last name. I'll do a similar thing for first name and email. And then finally, I'll do another approach here for salary. And if it's a default, meaning that they didn't give us the proper column, I simply return the last name. I also override this method get column class. That'll simply give the actual class of that data element. So we know that we're dealing with a string or double or int. All right, so let's go ahead and move back into our actual um, employee search app. And so this is an action listener. So instead of printing out the uh, employee information with system out print lines, I now want to make use of my table model. So what I want to do is create an instance of the model and set it on this GUI table component. So I'll drop in the code for it. So I'll make use of that employee table model that we had earlier. I construct it, passing in the employees that we found. And then I'll say table.setModel, and I pass in the actual model. And that's it. Let's go ahead and save this file, and let's run it. So we connected to the database successfully. Move this over here. I'll zoom in a bit. And I will first start off by not entering anything and just hit search. So this should give me everything. So note this GUI is updated with the information. Um, I'll also enter the last name of Tom. So this will give me everything like Thomas star. I will also do uh, just the first letter of D. So I get all the last names that start with D. And now just for sanity's sake, I'll clear everything out again. And I'll get all of the employees again. So as you can see, we're successful with actually having our application read the data from the database and update the GUI. Very good. All right, so this wraps up our series. So we were successful in populating the GUI list grid uh, with the J table with data. So this completes our little mini tutorial series on building a swing GUI to, to connect to a database. Thanks for following through with all the videos. I'd also like for you to click like on this video and also to subscribe to our channel. Also visit lovetocode.com to download the Java source code used in this video.